What's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to use the military as a stepping stone for your college success. If you have a question or a comment, leave it in the comment section down below. But for today, it comes from Chris who says, most people won't make 10K a month. This guy is an outlier. This is what I was able to achieve within my time in the military. And I can tell you that it's definitely not an outlier. To be called an outlier, all you have to do is just think in a different way. When you think and operate in a different way, you're going to get different results. So if you think about the extremes and operate in the extremes, you're going to get extreme results. If you think in the average, operate in the average, you're going to get average results. And you can kind of live however you want in between the average and the extreme. It's totally up to you. I'm not saying what is right, what is wrong. And so, for school, age doesn't typically matter, but I would recommend the younger the better. So if you're in high school, thinking about joining the military and then going to school, this is what I would recommend. If you're a little bit older and you, re you realize the value of education and you wanna go back to the military to be able to turn your life around, this is what I would recommend. The goal is to join get the GI Bill, and then dip out, right? That's like the purest goal. And so you wanna join the military enlisted active duty, right, for two to four years. So it really depends on the branch that you have, but the less, the better in this case. So Army has like a two or three year contracts. Um, so that's okay. It doesn't really matter what job you pick, um, but ideally the higher ASVAB score, the better, right? Because it's more or less physically intensive. The less the ASRA score requirement, the more highly physical labor intensive it is. And so the difference between higher physical labor versus low physical labor, it's basically this. Do you want more free time or less free time? If you want more free time, get a higher ASVAB score so you can do less physical labor. And so um, Navy and Air Force and a couple of other branches like this um, have a like a minimum four year requirement. Sometimes the recruiters and the MEPS people will try to trick you into signing like a five year, you know, four year active, one year extension, stuff like that. So be very careful. You don't have to sign for that one year extension. Um, but some of the jobs that you pick for higher ASVAB score will require you to do a prolonged period of time. So you can kind of balance it out. But like I said, the less, the better if your pure intention is to just use this as a stepping stone. And so here is the playbook. The playbook is you join in your first year, you wanna pay off the GI Bill. Um, and you do this in the, in the very beginning in boot camp, where all you have to do is just pay $100 per month for a year. It may vary depending on at what time you're looking at this. That was true for me at that time. Um, and then you get your GI Bill after you get out. And then you wanna pay off any debt that you have and live dirt poor. And I can't emphasize the importance of living dirt poor um, because it just puts you in a very good position after your time in the military. And I'll kind of share with you an example. So the goal is to save $1,000 per month. Right, so in a year, you save $12,000 per month. And so when I joined back in 2015, I was an E1 being paid $1,400-$500 per month, right? So I was able to do it and I lived dirt poor. It was very hard and I know you can do it too because I've done it. Um, and you wanna add everyone you meet on social media and share your journey. And I'll kind of go into more in depth about this later on. And so year two, save $24,000 health rank. Um, when I say health, right, physical fitness, right? Just make sure you're fit, rank up, get certification and take classes. These are the only um, five things that I want you to uh, focus on unless you're you know, preparing to exit. But for the most part, these are the only five things you should be concerned about. You, should be con you shouldn't be concerned about marrying, settling down, or you know, having fun or anything like that, or going on vacations. You can do that, but if you want to live in the extreme to get extreme results, this is kind of what I would do. And so these are the only things that you, would, you should focus on. And one of the things is making sure you continue to take classes. The last thing that you'd want to do is think about it like this. Let's say you're in high school here and you join the military, you have a four year contract. By the time you get out, you're 22. And, and then you decide, hey, I'm going to work out, right? Let's say physical fitness. You haven't worked out for four years. You're going to get hurt if you try to overdo yourself in the beginning. It's going to, you're going to have to rebuild that level of discipline and have it over again to be able to be on track for physical fitness. It's no different than school and academics. You're using a muscle, a way to solve problems and academic success. 
you want to continue to develop that muscle within the four, you know, however many years that you're in. And then after you get out, obviously you're going to have the level of discipline so you can you know, do it even more. So that's why taking classes is important, uh, as well as saving money, because you know the higher and, and more challenging universities you go to, the more your money you're going to need to have in the bank for you to be able to sustain yourself. And you want to sustain yourself because after whatever university you go to, the goal is to get a higher paying job, right? Which we'll t uh, touch up on later on. And so uh, whenever you are preparing to exit, so let's say you have a four year contract um, in year three, this is what I would do. I would utilize service to school as well as warrior scholar project, connect with them, pay. Uh, and then they, these are free service, um, which they introduce you to higher academics. Right. So you may have to pay for your travels. You may have to use your vacation days within the military, but it's something that I would highly recommend. So to give you an example, um, in June, in about two months here, through the Warrior Scholar Project, I'm going to Harvard for a week because I, I got invited to attend one of their classes for a week, which exposes me to that kind of community because my goal is to try and attend Princeton in 2025. And so this is what I would recommend, you know, the year prior to you getting out. So if you have a two or three, let's say a three year contract, this is what I would do in year two, okay? And so um, to give you an example, the reason why you need to live dirt poor, like on the left-hand side here, I had $200,000 and I was sleeping in an air mattress renting a room for $700 per month. Only after my back started to hurt did I get a nice bed, right? So like if you have a lot of money in the bank, it's not for the sake of like greed of money. That's not what this conversation is about. Money it's going to help you maintain the most important asset, keep you focused on developing the most important asset, which is your brain. For your brain to be focused on academics, not worried about paying your bills, will help you develop more so you can get a better paying job later on. That's what the pure focus of being able to save a lot of money is. And so the reason why um, I mentioned you want to add a lot of people, everybody that you meet from military as well as civilians, and you want to, if you're an introvert, like I used to think I'm an introvert, but like, I'm, like you're, you're, nobody is really an introvert. It's just a made up word. Just everybody is brand new to everybody in the military, by the way. So everybody wants to make friends with everybody in the military, right? Like, like think about it. Everybody is brand new to everybody in the military. There is no clicks. It's easy to meet people because you're just surrounded by people. And so the thing that you want to do is whenever you introduce yourself, just connect with them on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on um, those are the two primary social media platforms that I'd recommend and just share your journey. And when I say share, I don't mean like share the partying lifestyle, how cool you are or anything like that. Share the lessons that you learn, expose yourself to like, hey, before I joined the military, I had a very hard time with, you know, being a leader for people or communicating with people. But, you know, through this experience, I was able to be a better person. Here's how. And when you do that over a prolonged period of time, like I was able to do right here, you build a level of reputation. And so you can see it's like 500 likes, 34 shares, 144 comments. Because I've done that for a very prolonged period of time and I built good connections, people are reaching out to me from the military that are saying like, hey, there's this position open for $45 an hour. Do you want it? And so that's kind of the connections that you want to build because when you meet somebody for the first time, you just meet them. But when you consistently post content, share your life, the lessons that you learn, they start to like you. And so when they start to like you, then they can recommend you for jobs, for higher level positions, right? So that's the long-term play as to why I recommended you to do that. And so when you get your degree, get out, and you're looking for a higher paying job, you already have a very warm network that you can tap into. That's the ultimate goal, okay? So if I was to join the military to use it as a stepping stone for my academic success, for long-term success, this is exactly what I would do. So thanks for watching, hope this helped, peace.